Hello, you're with the RT Mummy and today I have a pastel tutorial which I'm going to be repeating very soon because very frustratingly, I mean, I literally nearly cried um, after spending a few hours on it last night and then getting up in the very early hours of the morning at like 3 o'clock to finish it, I found that I had a big chunk missing out of the middle again. I really need to get another camera. Um, but anyway, I just began this one by I thought I'd po post it, sorry. I thought I'd post this up by um, and just give you guys something to watch and sort of get a handle on the process and then we're going to do it again and I'll have that uploaded hopefully later this morning. Um, it'll probably be as close to live as I can get because um, the kids are all sleeping and I'm just going to try and record it and get it straight out there for you guys um, in sort of real time. So I started by just sketching out by focusing on the big shapes and getting those right and then sketching in quite roughly but that's a, a nice easy way to get uh, get your early sketch down. Added a little white to them and then roughed in a background with um, brown and black. And took notice of the of the values more than anything, and the shapes. So you know, get your darks and your lights in. So I used that khaki brown colour and um, and black. And it's a good idea to remember at this stage about um, light against dark and dark against light. So that means that if your subject or where your subject is a light colour, you need to have a darker area in the background and where your subject is a darker colour you put lighter in the background so everything reads nice and evenly when it's finished um, there are, is some uh, literature and stuff probably on YouTube as well about that I might even post something up myself but uh, it's more to do again with about how your eyes can play tricks with you regarding tone and colour so also for the first time ever I have used alcohol on my underpainting and that worked really really well. Um, I love how it really darkened it up and gave you a beautiful base to work on without losing any of the tooth on the paper. And there was a couple of little spots that I didn't go quite heavy enough for the alcohol ink to spread it well. And um, yeah, no, it worked very well. So there was the big section that I missed and all I've done is just built up on those darks and lights again and started to rough in the, the details. I have used a light grey, uh, sky blue and um, a little bit of brown, sort of a more ready brown for that and some warm yellows for the grass and browns again as well and I'm now just starting to get some detail on I think he turned out really really quite cute I, I really love it actually and um, like I said I nearly cried when I realized I was missing a great big chunk of it but um, I will be doing him again this morning for you so don't worry we will have a slow and detailed and step by step for you very soon I hope and I'm going to grab my old phone that I know doesn't do this um, to do that. I'm going to steal it off my son who I gave it to. But um, yes, new camera in the pipe work I think for filming. Definitely. So one issue that I found was that I, I tended to sort of lose his legs and everything. His legs are there but... Um, but they're lost in the original picture um, and I sort of kept putting them in and kept losing them <laughs> but um, and the other part that was probably a little bit challenging was um, without using a pencil if you have um, if you have pastel pencils it's probably a good idea to use those for the detail parts because accuracy is very helpful and with your ordinary soft pastel um, rounds it can be a little bit hard to get the horns and the face right on him 
at this size so that's just an A4 piece of pastel paper and I found I had to sort of redo the edges here and there a few times to get the shapes really right with the layers but um, yeah like I said I'm really happy with how they turned out in the end so hopefully I can reproduce it so and with the grasses it was just a lot of layers um, there's a lot of twigs and bits of grass and stuff in the background there that I end up softening out a bit to make to push them back and the foreground gets a lot more um, detail in it and quite a bit of just back and forth with the light and the dark and adding in a navy blue and um, and a very bright white to get the colors right on the coat and and the um, and the tones he's got that little fat pudding belly that um, that you kind of need to work on a little bit to get it to to pop out and um, yeah I wonder if the female goats actually grow horns in that breed because um yeah that one looks pregnant to me <laughs> it's got a real belly on him either that or they're in a good paddock which it kind of looks like they are it looks like they're, they've got a big load of hay around them or something but I'm, I know from the gentleman that shared the photo to me Gappy Pirate how you going thank you so much for this photograph um, I know that they are wild goats and, that, and they're out in the wild there in the photos taken so yeah working on the second guy now and he's a lot um, a lot easier and a lot quicker because you haven't got to worry about his face he's just really a, a rectangular shape with a few different tones and, and his horns so he's quite easy to do I got rid of that little green bush that he's sort of backed up against because it, I just didn't think it read well as a painting and just added in a little cute fluffy tail and, and a little bit of detail back there that isn't shown in the picture I'm guessing really um, Yeah, just because I, I like it better that way. If you wanted to have the little green bush in the corner, you're welcome to add it in. And just finishing off all that lovely fur and added some green into the background. Not too bright, um, sort of a, a dark olive green. And I, I did use dark, um, sorry, grass green at one stage, uh, but it's with the layering it, it gets softened out and um, and brought back in a bit so just working on the background now getting some of those darks in there fairly happy with my goats at this stage just gonna go probably two or three layers of dark over light over dark over light and just build up the depth in those grasses a little bit of artistic license there and those twiggy bits uh, the little dead tree looking things uh, got those coming out a little bit more as well added in some green just for a different um, bit more interest even though there's not a lot of green in the picture uh, it just looked a bit too dull without adding it. And lots of little crisscrossy random marks there for that hay looking area in front of them. And softening out that background to, to push it back. So I used the, much more of the side of the pastels on the, on the back side of the goats. And much more of the sort of pointy edge. Um, the grey twigs I put in with pale blue rather than a grey. It's just got a, a nice warmer tone. And then went along the edges of the, some of those grey marks with um, with the black to show them as twigs and give them a bit of shape um, and depth. And over again with the black and then light yellow colour. And then I, I went over with a, a lemon and also a um, a 
I did for a couple of different Charlotte shades of yellow. So that's our little pair of goats all finished and looking lovely. And um, like I said, I'm going to now go and attempt to do it, again, do it all again. If you like these guys, please um, let me know what you think. I really enjoyed painting them and um, I'll see you again shortly with the long version. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. See you, see you in a little bit.